Hello, everyone. Welcome to the monthly technical steering committee from the Linux Foundation Product Everest. We have, again, some really interesting news for you, a couple of updates from all the events we have been around the world. We have the first uh, charter controller with NXP semiconductor uh, announced. That was really exciting. We have now Rust support feature complete, uh, working towards that for quite a while. And the joint office did the first um, CFR compliant starting session demonstrated with all the PKE in the loop. Also, that uh, was, I think, some interesting and also short nights a couple of weeks ago. But before we dive into all the content, let me quickly share the antitrust policy. So there's a lot of organizations here in the room. And please only share things which you're legally entitled to share. OK, so what's new? Uh, before we really dive into the details, I have some so juicy statistics. I've shown them in the last month so to so many people. Uh, for example, this graph. So we have roughly 400% of 5x increase of active contributors. So typically now we are on a monthly base, more than 100 people actively working on Everest. And in total, it has been more than 300 already. Um, so I would call this quite a big developer base. And uh, if we look on the geographical distribution, it's not just Pionix. This is a real global project. Yes, Europe, North America are really strongly represented, but also we got some contributions from Asia and looking forward to get that extended. Um, as I already mentioned in the introduction, uh, we can also now welcome NXP to the Everest family. Uh, Phytech announced a charge sum, which is exclusively running on NXP designs. So next to um, the Phytech uh, and Texas Instruments charge controllers, now this is uh, also an NXP solution, which will be there off the shelf. Um, let's dive into event recap. Um, I've been traveling a lot. Um, let's start with the OCA Plug Fest in Asia. Uh, I was there invited as a board member of the Open Charge Alliance and also introduced them. What does Everest bring on the table? What you can improve? I mean, you know all the stories. Did a similar pitch on a meeting between Chardemo Alliance and Open Charge Alliance, also there. Yet another 80 people in Japan. Um, we have, have been on EVS, had a talk, had a poster session, and met a lot of people. Uh, Embedded World was the announcement of the charge form you just saw. And I think also yesterday and today, um, Pete was on the plug and charge interop testing event from Hubject. And what I heard also, uh, they made quite some progress and fixed some tiny bugs here and there, uh, and overall worked really well. So working group state of the union. Um, so Dima was submitting uh, the final pull requests for Rust. I think we'll come that later on again. And we have quite some attendance in the working groups. And yeah, I would say overall it's running really smooth. And if you want to see the details here, we store all the notes in the uh, wikis and the schedule of all the working groups you can find on the uh, everest.github.io page. If you scroll down, there's an Everest compass and you will see all the slots and meetings and things how you can join the Everest uh, working groups and ecosystem. But let's dive into the topics. Let's start with cloud communication. And Kai, can you cover this? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, however, I don't see, ah, now I see the, now I see the slide. Now I can actually talk about something. Um, as always, uh, the cloud communication group has uh, quite uh, good attendance uh, and there's always some really good uh, discussions uh, going on there on, I think, a weekly basis, and everybody's quite happy with this. Uh, some highlights from the last month of our CPP development. Um, we now have uh, configurable uh, transaction start and stop points uh, implemented uh, for 201. Uh, implementation on the smart charging um, has started. And uh, yeah, the list of the use cases and requirements is now, uh, now up to date as well. Uh, we also support uh, database migrations uh, now between uh, the databases for the 1.6 and the 201 implementation. Uh, so no uh, wiping of the database uh, or deleting of the database. Uh, if we do a change to the database uh, schema again, this uh, now happens uh, transparently on, on startup and also supports uh, downgrades. 
as well. Um, we've been working away on the uh, move from the WebSocket plus uh, plus library to lib WebSockets. Uh, this is uh, going really well. Uh, we changed the default to uh, lib WebSockets in the last couple of weeks and don't really see uh, much issues. Um, and yeah, I think the move should be done uh, relatively um, relatively soon. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the update. Okay, let's go on with car communication. I think you also cover that. Or oh, Moritz, probably, uh, do you want to cover this? Um, I can cover that uh, if you if you want me to. So first of all, there's been a lot of development on ISO fifteen eleven dash twenty. Um, the lib uh, there's been a, yeah the the D twenty module is not on the main branch of Everest. It's still on, under development, but the supporting lib ISO 11.8 has gotten a lot more um, of the regular support for all the, for TLS for proper um, closing, opening and closing connections and uh, more proper stuff. Um, still not complete. And also, as it says here, only the scheduled mode, not the dynamic mode, um, but including um, the bidirectional. The JS EV Manager has now been uh, introduced and merged. I think it replaced um, the Joseph, uh, the, the Joseph code, the, the Java-based code, and um, is a bit more flexible as an EV simulator. And there's also a C++ um, EV Manager in the works. There's also there's already a, a pull request being discussed on that. Um, so of course, Dash Twenty is gaining some some traction and. Um, also looking for AC integration right now. And of course, there are requests to also cover the Dash 2 in there. Um, this The Dash 2 support currently is in a separate module, which is not being expanded for Dash 20. So that's why this lib ISO shall cover um, all the protocols ultimately. And it works ongoing. Okay. Thanks a lot. So Everest Framework and Tools. I think that's Kai again. Um, yeah, um, just a few things. Uh, we're kind of working a little bit on uh, being able to display version information uh, during every startup. Uh, there's a few pull requests for that. And I think uh, this will not be something that will uh, emerge in this release, but uh, I'm pretty sure at least before the next stable, we'll have some uh, a solution that we, that we like and that we have uh, integrated. And then there's been quite some uh, contributions from uh, Credo since the last update. Uh, Holger, you want now, to cover that yourself? Um, Just saw I, that Holger I, is here. Oh, Holger is there. So yeah, Holger can... I, I'm here and I'm delighted. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well then, um, So the, like, the Iskra meter support, I think I actually mentioned already here, so I'm not sure, but like we contributed the module to talk to the Iskra meters um, um, like an Eris module, it's as simple as that. Very useful if you have an Iskra meter. Um, we also now fully uh, contributed the support for payment terminals. This is actually a two-parter. Um, we had already open sourced a like library that speaks the ZVT protocol, which is a protocol to payment devices like credit card terminals. And um, we actually donated that to the Everest project in the last few weeks. Um, so it was before it was open sourced in the Quello org. Now it is open sourced into the Everest project. And based on this library, on this crate, we built a fully working Everest module that can handle Eichrecht compliant payment on charge points. Um, and there was like a lot of work that went into that, a lot of design work also that was um, kind of pushed by Quello, but not completely done by Quello alone, um, where we defined basically what does a payment module needs to know? How do you actually tell it how much money it should book and so on and so forth? So uh, very happy on how this turned out. And um, yeah, it's it's a delight to you. So if you want a payment terminal in your charger, that should be very easy now. We also uh, continue to contribute to our Rust support. So the the like Rust has a standard log logging framework and we built a transparent adapter so that if you use this standard Rust logging framework, then it will actually use the Everest logger uh, straight away. So that those two worlds are 
combined. Um, we contributed the multi-slot support. That was the last feature that was still missing um, to, to, to get to the, the current feature parity with C++. So we believe, um, to our knowledge, that Rust is now on feature parity with C++. Uh, a, a little caveat is we haven't like we haven't implemented the global error handling in Rust because the C++ work is not finished either. It's still in design work, and it doesn't make sense to uh, implement a like a, a design that's still under movement. But we will do so as soon as that lands. I know there's this don't uh, discuss things uh, rule I made up. Uh, but the, when we talk about payment, is the Californian pricing regulation white paper for OCVP extension thingy also on some some ways here? Not from our side. Like it is basically in, in the design, it was mentioned a couple of times. So it was considered that all of the data flow is possible to implement that there. But um, we are not working on that since we are not active in the US market. Thanks. But maybe I can add something to this. Uh, I don't think active uh, work is going on right now, uh, but we've all uh, looked over the, the white paper uh, already a few times, and I think this can be implemented uh, quite uh, straightforwardly uh, in, in the OSPP. So. Okay, so call for action. Whoever listens to this uh, and you think that's for use of you, please donate it. Please work on it. <laughs> So um, let's go on, Basil. Yeah, so Basil um, is also so from um, from Quello. Um, it continues to become a very viable option to integrate a, 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 like an Everest build into an existing built environment. Also, if you start out, it becomes very nice to actually use this now. So we added support for EVCLI and Everest Python, um, and we added a bunch of stuff to make um, across platform, sorry, across repo compatibility better, which is something that Basil really shines. Um, and the very big announcement that I'm very happy and very proud to say is that we have in the last week actually fully unforked the Everest fork that we have done in December. Uh, you remember if you follow the spot that in December we, we forked the main Everest repo because we had to go quicker to get everything done for our certification. Uh, this is now unforked. We have contributed everything back that was useful. And um, we're now on the mainline branch again. Amazing. Thanks a lot. So Everest admin panel. Um, Kai, you wanted to cover this? Or maybe Lucas was in the call. Oh, Lucas is here. Right. You're right. Yeah. Lucas. <laughs> uh, just very quickly, um, I uh, did a few new things, um, create new uh, configs in the admin panel is now possible. Um, it's possible to upload configs uh, in there and uh, use them there. So you can basically use it uh, like a little config editor, even without um, an Everest instance running fully. Um, the simulator now saves uh, configs in local storage as well. So yeah, you can uh, press the save button uh, when you're in simulator mode and um, it remembers until next session, uh, even without a Everest instance running. And um, the uh, simulator modules are now updated to a current state of Everest core because they were pretty outdated in there. Um, I fixed a lot of bugs. Um, it's still in alpha stage, I would say. Um, basically, when you use it, you will run into uh, some bugs um, here and there but please feel free to create bug reports and issues um, so that I can fix those as well and that we can get uh, into a state where the Everest admin panel can actually really be used um, by everyone all day for development work. And I really, really have to appreciate this because I was asking for that feature. As a field application engineer, which is kind of my side role, uh, if you quickly brainstorming architectural solution for certain use cases with potential adopters of Everest, you can literally do that with every device running a browser. But I, okay, mainly any laptop, laptop anytime. It's just uh, deployed on the GitHub pages. You just have to know the URL and then you can play with it. That's amazing. So CI CD on testing. Want to go? Um, I can do this, or Andreas, if he wants to. But uh... you can do this. 
Okay, sure. Then, uh, yeah, uh, in, in general, I think uh, we're, we're now pretty well aligned how uh, unit testing and integration um, testing can be done. There was uh, also a lot of uh, discussion around this uh, recently, so there's probably uh, more to come as well. Um, there's uh, best practices documentation uh, up there. We have, um, of, of course, uh, Rust code testing uh, available, uh, contributed by uh, by Quello, and yeah, in general, lots of discussions about um, testing in Everest. Uh, we're talking about things like adding uh, code coverage in, uh, in in some libraries, trying out how this is most nicely integrated within uh, GitHub uh, pull requests and things like that. So yeah, things are moving away there as well. So this is, I guess, Shankari. You're still on mute in case you're talking. Now you're unmuted. Um, yeah, so the PKI testing event was uh, changed to a PKI virtual workshop. Um, but uh, we were still able to participate. Uh, the original goal was to test adversarial PKI with revoked certificates and expired certificates and so on. Um, what we finally ended up doing was just showcasing the happy path because we didn't have a lot of time and we didn't have a lot of time to test um, the adversarial PKI test cases before um, the event, especially with software in the loop. Um, and so um, we did manage to showcase, though, um, for plug and charge with ISO 15118-2 and OCPP 201 working end-to-end -end with self-signed or um, average generated certificates. So this is a CFR 680 compliant charging session um, so showcase that um, people can use Everest um, and be CFR 680 compliant. Um, we are trying to now get this to work with um, the SAE uh, PKI. So I, I don't know if you're uh, aware, but um, like a Hubject um, in the EU, there is an initiative um, with a consortium that is uh, managed by SAE to um, focus on sort of a, a North American PKI, um, right? The the Ionti is their technical partner. Um, and Ionti actually provided certificates for the, the testing event. And so we tried to say, well, it works with average generated certificates. Now can we get it to work with um, the SAE certificates, um, and the answer is not yet. Um, there is an issue that is tracking um, the I... the current state um, of that in, in Everest demo, um, but it is not actually working end-to-end -end at this point. Go ahead, Marco. I, there have been quite some hubject bug, a few hubject bug fixes from today and yesterday. So if you're lucky, they will be up no, patched in the next days. Um, sure. I mean, I I don't think the issue is with. Um, so we're not actually even making any calls to um to uh, any API to do this. So I don't think it is really a object versus SAE sort of, I, I, I don't think the, the fixes will, will help us because what we're trying to do is we had a set of certificates that were generated you know, by Everest as part of the build and it works with that. And we have a set of static certificates that were provided by SAE and so we're not doing anything complicated. We're just trying to replace those certificates with these certificates that are working. Um, so okay. we'll fix we it. Found, <laughs> yeah, we found one issue, which is we asked them to generate new certs. That's resolved, but it's still not working. And so we're still looking at it. Um, and after that, we want to look at um, more non-happy path tests, you know, around OCSP um, <clears throat> and, you know, actually test those revoked and, and expired certificates. Um, it did uh, bring up an issue related to 
uh, improve black box testing um, to make that easier potentially. Um, but we should be able to report on that maybe at the next TSC. Thanks a lot. So general discussion and uh, Q&A group. Um, Yannick, you're here. You want to cover that. Otherwise, back to Kai. Old slide, actually. This is from the last um, TSC. Oh, no, anyone, everyone of us forgotten. Is there anything you want to share? And we forgot to flag this one. General working group slide at the at the beginning of the working group slides. Okay, let's that, skip that. Okay, monthly release news. Hi, I really like that you every you, every month you're finding a new icon to cover the current months. I'm always looking for how do you cover the next one? Yeah, well. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, I put a lot of effort into research. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. In general, I think most of the things in this uh, list have already been uh, been covered by uh, the working group updates. Uh, we had, I think, a quite successful uh, stable release uh, last month that uh, works pretty well. So we're going back to regular. Uh, source code uh, releases um, this this month uh, so no you know, extensive uh, testing uh, happening uh, on on the main branches uh, other than you know the, the usual um, and yeah there's uh, quite a lot of things uh, but like I said most has already been uh, discussed so, uh, so in... the next stable release will be then end of June right uh, yes yes uh, mm -hmm. every three months so end of June. Um, and yeah, this uh, April release, uh, as always, will will be released in in, in the coming days. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, what's next? I think there have not been any substantial changes. Um, so, just roughly speaking, um, yes, we working on all the OCPP. Uh, I, I Swift and Devon 8 things. I come to that in the next slide. There's uh, some discussion in the background around Chardemo. Um, we'll update you as soon as we have something in writing. There's also some discussion around uh, GBT. Um, we'll also add that as soon as, let's say, it's uh, better to share. Um, yeah, so OCAP timeline, I think, hasn't changed much. I think as the moment, we work mainly on smart charging, firmware management reservation, and then the pull in of the 2.1 BPT core messages. So even 2.1 is not yet released, should hopefully also happen this quarter. And then the full stable and tested 2.01 implementation will be then there end of Q3 or within Q3. And then full 2.1 implementation towards end of the year. Um, on IC 15.11.8. Um, so let me see if I spontaneously can cover that. Um, we're working on the stable releasing of DC and DC bidirectional power transfer on AC and AC bidirectional power transfer. That's uh, what's currently going on, especially with all the Dash 20 things where we uh, try to replace the Joseph Community Edition entirely with a new car simulator currently going on. Then the goal is to having the Dash 20 stabilized in parallel on its own branch, then piece by piece getting all the Dash 2 and iodine spec features onto that branch as well. And then when everything's stable there, we will replace it as a bunch. So far, that means you won't find the Dash 20 on the main branch because it just lives separately to keep stability separated. And yeah, on the ISO 1511.8-8, um, there is a consortium of companies who was looking into implementing that. Um, there are some discussions happening behind the scenes. I also don't know all the details, but let's see, hope for that this is happening soon. Um, final updates on upcoming events. Uh, EVS was happening today. Plug and charge test uh, event was also happening today. Um, joint office, you will be California Energy Commission workshop. 
amazing. Um, then there's the Open EV Summit. I have an entire slide about that. But please register. We already have a couple of dozen attendees uh, looking good. Uh, we have experts from Europe, which will fly in. I think it will be a really nice time for the North American community to gather around Everest and exchange ideas and, and work on things. Um, also having quite some interesting talks. Uh, Charge Tech Munich, I think Robert will have a talk there in June. Char North, Char in North America, uh, you will be there at a festival. Amazing. We planned to be there as well, but then they changed the date of the Char and festival. So originally it was a week after the Open EV Charting Summit. Now it's shifted. We can't make both. Um, but maybe someone else will join as well. I will be on the Hex Summit, which is kind of a startup summit in Lausanne. I got invited as a speaker there on the EV stage, Power to Drive in Munich. So to up to our knowledge, this is the globally biggest EV charging show with a couple of big conference buildings full of well, trade fair, basically a conference, I think also a little, but the, mainly it's the biggest trade fair on charging. Uh, embedded in, I think, the biggest trade fair on solar. So it's in the summits, it's, it's even larger. And I guess everyone from our industry will be there. Um, yeah, then there is in parallel uh, from the German, uh, German Federal Ministry of Transportation uh, Conference, we'll have a talk there pitching the Everest idea into the German industry. And then there is a Next challenge has to be in Latin America. Uh, not sure who will cover that. Looking for volunteers. And I just learned that the EVS, so the Electric Vehicle Symposium next year, EVS 38, will really be in Göteborg, Sweden. And it will probably also include a festival and a plug fest, as it was here in Asia. And maybe also a hackathon. So let's see if we can get an Everest hackathon or open source hackathon included there. Uh, looking for opportunities and also looking forward to see more of you there. Yeah, and as I said, please subscribe if you're North America for the EV Charting Summit. And I think that's it for the today's update. Next time we'll meet May 23rd. Um, and then again, every month. And if you want to join us in the meantime, join the different working groups. If you don't know which one, start with a general one, <laughs> uh, which happens weekly. And if you want to, if you need any reminders, invites, sign up to the mailing list or go to um, everest.github.io. There you'll find all the updates. And that's it for the update part today. And now we'll stop the recording and.